Hello and welcome to HL Image training session using the Array Analysis Tool. Once HL Image is up and running, the first thing we need to do is load an image that was scanned previously using scanner software of the Array template. In this case, we will use the Open Image button to select an image already stored on disk. In this case, it's a JPEG image and we will simply select the first array analysis image uh, that we have stored on disk. And in order to see it better, we're going to zoom it up and see the whole image. Now's a good time to talk about calibration because it's the first step we need to do. But let's also open up another viewport and again open up another image. Uh, let's just pick the next one and we'll zoom that up. And we will notice that the manner in which it was scanned is not exactly in the same place in the image. Therefore, this image is vastly different than this image. The kit that you are using hopefully came with a template, and the template probably looks something like this. Now this template here has columns 1 through 24 and rows A through F. Assuming that F is located at 0, 0, we need to measure the template you can measure it in inches or centimeters or whatever units you like. But you need to either call the company that made the kit and get the coordinates for the center of each of these circles, which is the template that you would normally lie over your film strip and just visually look at it. But in this case, we're using an image processing package to get better results. So we need to take the information in this template, which has already been put into a template INI file, and we need to transfer that information somehow to get the same template overlaid on top of this image here. The way you do that in software is using the calibration. In this case, in HL Image, we have a calibration tool. So let's open the calibration tool and let's see how easy it is to calibrate the system. Now, for good calibration, we want to use four points on the image in the four corners. So lower left, upper left, upper right and lower right. So let's do that. You start by simply saying I'm going to now tell the calibration tool where point one is. So we click point one and then we go over and left click in the middle of where point one should be and now we've just placed calibration point one on the image. Now we do the same for point two and point three and point four. Now those four points are going to translate image coordinates into real world coordinates. But what are our real world coordinates? Well, those come from the template itself, from measuring the template itself. So we just simply assume, to make things easy, that point F1 is location 00. So we go back to HL image and we just simply enter in 00. Now for point 2, that would be an X of 0 and a Y of 0.5. We know that because we measured our template. And in our template, that is row A, and if we look at our template.ini, row 1, which is A, is at 0.5. Now this was measured in inches. So we know from our template.ini file, which is specific to this kit, that that is a value of 0.5. So the X would be 0 still, and Y would be 0.5. Now point 3, we know, again, from measuring the template, that that is 2 in the X direction and 0.5 in the Y direction. Now, you select point 4 by just selecting the best, lowest right point that is known. In this case, it's row A, B, C, D, according to our template, would be D24. And we know that that is a 2 in the X direction, but we need to go look at the template.ini file to find out what it is in the Y direction. So row D is point two oh eight. So we enter in 0 0.208. Okay, now if your template differs or you have a different template, the method is the same. You'll just have different values. But you should always pick the lower left, the upper left, the upper right, and the lower right as best as you can to get a, the best calibration that you can. Okay, now another good idea is to make sure that these points are as centered as you can get them visually. So in this case, we're going to zoom up to about four times. 
and we notice that that's not truly centered. So just simply using the arrow keys, we're going to center that up a little bit better. Now hitting the tab button with the viewport active will bring you to the next point. So we hit the tab button, that brings us to our next point, and we're just going to center that up a little bit. And you will notice that the image coordinates in the calibration tool also change when you move the ROI on the screen. We're going to go to the third point and use the arrow keys again to center that up as good as we can. And then finally the fourth point. Now we'll go back to a zoom level of two. And now that our points are centered as good as we can get them visually, we simply say create a calibration object. The calibration object is the item that actually transfers image coordinates into real world coordinates. Now because our image is named MB1, we should rename the calibration object to the same. So in this case I'm going to just name it MB1. Now that that calibration object is created, I simply attach it to the image. Very important step to remember to do, otherwise things won't work out as planned. So don't forget to click the button Attach to Image. That attaches the calibration object to the image. Now that we're done calibrating, we can close the calibration tool. Now we open the Array Analysis tool. The first thing we should do with the Array Analysis tool is figure out where we want to put the results of our inspection. So we click on the Answers button, and we click on the folder of where we would like to put our results. So let's put them under Mayo Clinic, as that's where these images came from, and Results. The Reanalysis tool shows us that that is now where our results are going to be placed. Because this image has a calibration object attached to it already, all we have to do is click the Make Circles button, and the circles set themselves up according to the template. Now I'm going to increase the thickness of the circles. It does not change any processing. It's just a visual effect so that we can see where the circles are a little bit better on the screen. Now, if we look at the template, you will see that this template, which is described in the template INI file, now appears on the image as if you were laying a hypothetical template on top of your image. In order to get the results, all we have to do is click Get Answers. It asks if we would like to do that into a comma separated value file, which can be loaded then into any type of spreadsheet. And yes, we do, so we simply click Yes. Let's go look and see if our result file appeared where we think it should have. And let's open it with Excel. And there are our results for each cell. So in the first column, we have the cell name according to the template, A1. In the next column, we have the name of the cell according to the manufacturer's kit, whatever they doped the cell with. And in the third column, we have the average grayscale value inside the template for that cell. Again, that's the average grayscale value. In a perfect world, the circles for the template would overline with the dots from our results. But because the kits are not perfect, they don't always line up. So you can either simply click on an ROI. That was a right click. Just simply right click over any ROI or circle, which is a region of interest, to activate that circle. Then using the arrow keys, you can better align the template with your actual results. At any time, let's say you really messed it up, at any time you can always say make circles again and it will put it back to the original location according to the calibration object. Now, a lot of times you could do this as a group and that's what these two buttons are. So if I select the top row for this column and I select group, it'll group all those and then I can move all of them at a single time with the arrow keys and then ungroup and then we would go to the next group. Okay, this may be a faster way to align the circles with the dots uh, other than one by one. After all your circles are aligned with your dots, again, we're going to close Excel down because we're going to overwrite that file. When your circles are satisfactory aligned, simply click Get Answers and OK. That will, again, generate the comma separated value file, which can be opened then in a spreadsheet, such as Excel. Okay, now. Let's say you were aligning your cells and you wanted to go to lunch. 
In that case, you would want to save your work. I mean, in case you want to close your computer down. So to save the work you have done so far, which is making your calibration object and also aligning as good as you can the circles with the dots, you would want to save this as a job. A job file, not, it includes both the image, the calibration, and any ROIs on the image. So we will go to save job and we will put it simply in with our images and it has the same name as the image except with extension job. Okay, therefore next time if we go to lunch and let's say we came back and we started up HL image. Instead of doing all that work again, we simply open the job that we just saved. And let's go zoom it up and we're back to where we left off. Okay, so that is how you use the array analysis tool for HL image to analyze your race. If you have any further questions, please contact support at wvision.com for further help.